Hi, my name is Maggie Mahoney. My capstone is called Beyond an Orientalist Novel, Discovering Intersectionality and Nuance in Amy Tan's The Joy Luck Club. The Joy Luck Club was Chinese-American author Amy Tan's first novel. It came out in 1989. Some themes of the book include mother-daughter relationships, generational divides, and multifaceted Chinese-American identities. The novel received critical attention and praise, but was also critiqued by some scholars such as Ruth Maxey as self-orientalizing. Interestingly, marketing of the novel either tended toward exploiting difference or disregarding it altogether, which is what inspired me to create this thesis. My thesis is as follows. The Joy Luck Club, through its experimental short story form that rotates between different characters' perspectives, although not devoid of flaws, performs intersectionality by refusing to reduce Chinese-American women and their complex hyphenated identities to simple categories. The novel encourages a fuller-bodied intersectional understanding of Chinese-American females in moments that display their oppression due to race, gender, class, and age. The intersectionality of the novel also dispels Orientalist stereotypes and the popular model minority myth. Some key terms we have to define prior to jumping in. Intersectionality was first coined in 1989 by Kimberly Crenshaw, the same year the Joy Luck Club was released. She used this term to address the systemic disadvantages that can accompany interconnected social categories as they refer to individuals and to examine the multiple forces and injustices acting on an individual. Patricia Hill Collins's definition from the 1990s, the examination of how gender, race, class, and nation intersect and mutually construct each other is also useful. Racial triangulation refers to the field of racial positions in which the dominant white group valorizes Asian Americans in comparison to Black Americans while simultaneously ostracizing Asian Americans as unassimilable. Finally, Edward Said's conception of Orientalism is a useful concept. Um, it refers to a representation of the East, often Asia, as backwards, exoticized, stuck in the past, and inferior to the West. All right, in 1965, we entered an era of coded racial triangulation, whereby race became recoded as culture. This coding erased past historical oppression towards minority groups, asserted post-racial colorblindness, and reassigned the labor for racism onto the individual rather than society. The book The Joy Luck Club came out post-1965, during a moment that saw a rise of post-racial discourse, um, assuming that race is no longer a societal issue and pleading a racially colorblind world. Um, in the, this quote by Patricia Chu is highly useful in understanding my thesis. She says, in the mother-daughter plot, the tension between sameness and difference resides in the mother-daughter dyad itself, as each party struggles to overcome perceptions of the other's differentness and to locate the qualities they have in common. Such a plot is ideally suited to examining how ethnicity is constructed as a source of intergenerational differences, as well as commonality. The above quote well describes how the Joy Luck Club encourages intersectional identity constructions. The book's rotating narratives of generational divides and differences perform intersectional work. The short story form portrays identity markers as both unique from one another and interdependent when combined when it, within an individual. The intergenerational dialogues in Tan's work simultaneously contrast Chineseness and Chinese Americanness while also revealing similarities in the Chinese female experience. In this way, Tan shows the audience the distinctiveness of specific identity markers separate from one another. Juxtaposing the Chinese mothers and their Chinese-American daughters clarifies both groups' experiences. Chinese and American experiences thus mutually construct each other. It is important to note also that we as readers occupy the American identity perspective in this case. An example from the text of how Tan highlights intersectionality is as follows. This close reading is from the perspective of the Chinese mother, Ying Ying. She describes being courted by an American man who gives her small gifts as tokens of his affection, saying, Saint acted as if these gifts were nothing, as if you're a rich man treating a poor country girl to things we had never seen in China. He did not know that such things were nothing, that I was raised with riches he could not even imagine. Notice how the American man's classism, sexism, and xenophobia both act on Ying Ying simultaneously. His assumptions about her arise from her femaleness, 
her Chineseness, and his assumption that she is poor. The passage well shows what Crenshaw was referring to when she described intersectionality as how multiple forces and injustices act on an individual. In these li lines, Tan harshly critiques the West and the ignorance of Americans. We as readers are forced to confront and check our own assumptions about Asia as we learn about the American manse. That's all for my presentation.